Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us in this nice little intimate setting. We're a bit tired, the day's gone on a little bit, so let's power through this together, get a little bit of energy, and um, talk about private lower net WAN networks. So my name is Derek Wallace. I'm Director of Product Management for Multitech. I am also the Laura Alliance North America Regional Vice Chair, and it is my pleasure to talk to you about the benefits of lower WAN, private lower WAN networks today. I don't have much time, so I'm just gonna jump right into this. So for a little background, a little comparison and to set up the talk about private lower WAN networks, what you're seeing on this slide are a traditional picture of a traditional public LoRaWAN network. On the left-hand side, you see lower end nodes that are out there in the world attached to assets, such as pet trackers, water meters, vending machines, for example. Now, what they do is they use LoRaWAN technology to communicate from the end nodes to the gateway. And that gateway, in turn, sends that information, in this instance, up to the cloud via different backhaul technologies, such as cellular, for example. And what kind of gives this a hint that this is a public LoRaWAN network is the fact that the three elements of the LoRaWAN network server are in the cloud, the join server, the application server, and the network server. And it's the LoRaWAN network server that governs the communication between uh, the end nodes that are out there in the world. This is a great solution. I, I love LoRaWAN. I've been involved with this about five years now. Um, if we have lots and lots of great public LoRaWAN network providers in the LoRa Alliance that are delivering great service. In fact, if you go on the LoRa Alliance website and take a look at the coverage map, or you just look over my shoulder right here, you will see that the world is painted yellow with public LoRaWAN network deployments in over 140 countries around the world which is fantastic, so it's a great solution. However, what we've been noticing over the past few years are more and more enterprises are entering into the IoT space. They are figuring out their IoT strategies, they're figuring out the IoT use cases and applications that they need to uh, drive those strategies. They're also trying to figure out their digital transformation strategies, utilizing LoRaWAN networks. And what they have found is that the traditional LoRaWAN networks in the public uh, aspect may not need, meet all the requirements that they have, because there's some unique requirements that this slide really is talking about here. And I'm not gonna go through everything, just gonna touch upon a couple of them and you can read the rest. So, the first one, demand for robust, agile, local connectivity. And we're really talking about two areas here, resiliency and security. On the resiliency side, if we go back to this public LoRaWAN, what you'll see is that the end nodes, they communicate with the LoRa network server, again, because it's governing that communication, but they're sending all traffic, all data packets up to the cloud where the LoRa network server resides. Again, it's a great solution. However, more and more enterprises, and not all of them, mind you, but a good number of enterprises have stated that they have applications or IoT use cases where they really want the resiliency to be able to keep those IoT applications running if they can't get access to the internet. Private LoRaWAN networks actually solves our problem. It solves it by bringing the elements of the network server from the cloud down to the gateway. And by that, you have some local communication utilizing LoRaWAN between the end nodes and the gateway so that if there's an outage, that communication is still going. Combine that with uh, edge intelligence on the gateway and your IoT use case can keep going. Security. Obviously, everyone in here knows security is very, very important when it comes to IoT. And in this particular case, the security when talking about is more about controlling the traffic that's on your network. So enterprises have been saying that they want to build and manage and control their own network. And they want to be able to control all the traffic that's on it. They know what's on it. Um, and private lower run networks with that different architecture they talk about gives them that kind of control. Lowering the total cost of ownership, because obviously cost is a big deal and everything with regards to IoT. So in this case, it's the backhaul costs that I'm just gonna touch upon. Again, going back to this traditional model, the end nodes that are out there in the world, they're sending that information to the gateway, and those gateways are operating in packet forwarder mode, and they're just sending all the traffic up to the lower network server in the cloud. 
And there are many, many cases where that backhaul technology that's being used is cellular. So that means all those packets are continually going up to the cloud and it's costing money. So enterprises said, you know, we'd like to be able to control and reduce those backhaul costs. Private LoRaWAN networks, because of the change in uh, or architecture, enable that reduction in costs. And in fact, with Multitech, what we found this year is that those backhaul costs utilizing cellular communication, with private LoRaWAN networks, you can save about up to 55% in backhaul costs via cellular. Um, one of our customers that we're working with has told us that they're saving over 60% in cellular backhaul costs. There's one uh, really good benefit, a driver that's not actually on this slide, and it's business model agility and flexibility. And I'll talk about that in a couple of slides when I talk about the use cases. Here is one instance or one version of a private LoRaWAN uh, architecture. This is actually based on the Lens solution that Multitech introduced this year, though it looks a lot like the original architecture for the public LoRaWAN network models. You can see on here that the gateway in the center has the network server and the application server pulled down from the cloud sitting on the gateway, as I described. Now, in this particular version, we have abstracted the joint server and put that in a private cloud. Uh, however, a more traditional LoRaWAN, private LoRaWAN network would have that joint server on the gateway. And that enables some of those, that, that enables all of those things I was talking about, about data uh, going up to the cloud, controlling your uh, data that's across your network as well. So I've talked about two different types of uh, networks. And what I want to make really clear today is that this conversation is not about one network type being better than another network type. Uh, for me personally, this is really about the brilliance that is LoRaWAN technology and the architecture. Because LoRaWAN can offer both public networks and private network. And this slide that I really like about, I, like, I really like the arrow at the bottom. The arrow talks about a continuum. And the continuum is really about which type of network is best suited for your business needs, your IoT needs. And that comes down to how, when you're thinking about your IoT needs and your IoT strategy, how are you going to deploy out there in the world, how do you answer several key questions? And it's the answer to those questions that kind of points you in one direction or the other within public and private networks. For example, there are plenty of people out there in the world that don't have the skills, don't have the desire, don't want to have a CapEx expense to go and build and manage their own private, uh, their own LoRaWAN network. There are plenty of use cases out in the world that require mobility. Think of asset tracking, where you're tracking things across vast distances and even small distances. Or perhaps you're a customer out there and you've got your idea, but you want to get to a proof of concept or a trial really quickly, and you just want to join a network tomorrow. We have lots of public LoRaWAN operators around the world, over 140 countries. And if those are the answers to your questions, then public LoRaWAN networks are a great solution for you. However, if you are starting to see some of the needs and requirements of uh, enterprises that they've been sharing with us, you want that control of data over your network. You want to reduce your backhaul costs, especially cellular. You want to be able to leverage edge intelligence on the gateway so that you can take your own custom application, you can load it on the gateway, you can change it, update it as you want, when you want, according to the needs of your business. and. Many uh, enterprise customers have said they actually do not want an OPEX recurring model. Well, if those are the answers to some of your questions, then private LoRaWAN networks actually are a great solution for you. And again, what's really great about LoRaWAN technology is you have choice. You can go with public networks that have been around for a long time, they're going to be around for a long time to come, and private enterprise networks. So I have two use cases that I'll go through briefly. This first one is Yokogawa. Now, I was fortunate to be uh, doing a joint presentation with Yokogawa in Spain a couple weeks ago, where they introduced the sushi sensor solution to the European market. It's actually been in Japan for a little over a year now. Now, what the sushi sensor solution is, and I'm going to trip up on that, I always do, um, is a, it's a industrial grade sensor, LoRaWAN certified, which is very important, 
um, to ensure that performance and that connectivity, it's going to behave in the way that you expect it to be. Um, that measures vibration and temperature of industrial equipment, and in particular, industrial motors that are driving some pretty serious industrial processes. And those processes obviously are residing in these cases in some very serious industrial um, environments. So with this particular customer before, they were outsourcing these vibration measurements, um, and, and they weren't really able to use that data. So there were, you can see in the bottom left, outsourcing measurements at considerable expense, and then often that data wasn't useful because it was manually done, and it was often inaccurate, or it was transcribed incorrectly when it was put into the system to consume and use that data. So what Yokogawa's done is they've taken and created this industrial uh, uh, sushi sensor, connected it to a multi-tech gateway, which has the LoRa network server on board, which makes this a private LoRa, uh, LoRa network deployment, and they use uh, their data analytics and uh, visualization platform. Yokogawa presents this as a turnkey solution to their customers. And it has a lot of benefits. It's reducing the cost. It's enabling digital transformation for their enterprise customers in this industrial environment. And it's answering the question or the need of no recurring fees. They absolutely did not want OPEX fees. Um, one additional thing, and this goes back to the business model agility and flexibility that I talked about, is Yokogawa can go ahead and deliver this as a turnkey solution, and their customer can manage it themselves. Absolutely no problem. However, because of LoRa, the benefits and the agility of private LoRaWAN networks, should the customer decide that they don't want to or don't have the skills to manage that solution and the network elements of that solution themselves, or Yokogawa decides that they want to add to their IoT solution offering in the market, they can create a managed service offering to manage that turnkey solution for the customer. Another customer of a uh, partner or well, customer of Multitex is a digital pest management company. Now, they basically wanted to build a better mousetrap. They wanted to be able to detect rodent incursions and really get ahead of it before it got out of control. They also had a few extra uh, requirements as well that enterprises have been sharing, as I've said. So they wanted to be able to have local decision making. So they really, they've created their own custom app and they really wanted to be able to load that app onto their gateway and manage it as and when they will, update it however they want to. They wanted to reduce cellular backhaul costs because in most of these locations, cellular, where these environments where these mousetraps are deployed, is really the only backhaul technology that's available for them. And they wanted to control the traffic over their network. So what they did is they partnered with Multitech. They use a LoRaWAN certified X dot that's in the mousetrap that connects to a multi-tech gateway. And then that information, depending on the business logic of the application that's on the gateway, is sent to uh, the cloud for data analytics and visualization. And they as well take that and offer it as a turnkey solution to their customer. But because of the benefits of private LoRaWAN networks, should they want to add a managed service offering on top of that, they have that flexibility. So um, I'm going to close now. I think this has gone a little bit faster than I thought, so that, that's, that's great. Um, there are benefits of uh, private LoRaWAN networks. I've talked about that. I don't need to repeat it. What I would really like to repeat is that LoRaWAN technology is really flexible. It offers both public LoRa network uh, solutions for you, which is great for many, many, many use cases out there in the world. But private LoRaWAN networks also really address the needs that enterprises that have been showing over the past few years and will be a good solution for them going forward. And with that, thank you very much for your attention.